Hey everyone, welcome to the Heal Nourish Grow podcast. Today I am joined by Sean Wells and I am really excited to chat with him because first of all, he's working on some really cool projects right now, but secondly, he is basically like an expert in all things supplement. And you know, we have so many questions on this show about supplements, why we use them, what we should look for, which ones are good, which ones are bad. So anyway, I'm really excited to get to pick Sean's brain a little bit. Um, but before we do that, Sean, I'd love to just have you tell people, um, obviously I've read your bio already, but if you could tell them in your own words, like a little bit about yourself and some of your health background and, and how in the world did you get into this space? Because you have a really interesting past as a dietitian as well. So we'd love to hear more about that. Yeah. Thank you for having me on. And um I definitely have my hero's journey and it's what's uh, propelled me to learn so much and dig in and become an expert. And it's made me passionate about helping others to prevent them from a number of the things that I've had to deal with. Uh, I had a, a very chaotic and complex, difficult uh, childhood, both at home. That's not something that I like to, to be labor or kind of live in anymore, but that led to me overeating, being like a junk food junkie. And then when I went to school, I, I got bullied there. So I felt um, pretty like dark days, like both at home and and at school. And, and um, that led to me being chronically depressed, um, even uh, suicidal thoughts uh, as a young person and, and having morbid obesity, like... Um, you know, getting to about 300 pounds. Uh, I'm 6'2", 6'3", now. But, um, and then that led to me gaslighting myself, hating myself, not feeling good enough, uh, berating my own body, bullying myself. And I became an anorexic and I got down to 150 pounds. And I remember weighing myself when I would pee um, just to see if I was like one pound less and like these, these numbers became something I would fixate on. I went probably a year and a half on about 400 calories a day, working out several hours a day and, um, using ephedrine and caffeine. I was probably like literally in like negative calories a day, um, kind of crazy. And I paid the price like big time. Um, I ended up getting all these autoimmune issues. My body just really shut down. Um, Epstein-Barr, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, Hashimoto's, uh, eventually dealing with brain tumors. Um, I've had to have surgery in my neck, my back. I had two artificial discs put in my neck, uh, hip surgery, like just the degree to which my body was collapsing um, it was, it was crazy. And, and I also dealt with being, um, orthorexic. You know, I remember eating, you know, six to eight times a day, I'm going catabolic. I need to get my protein in and, and otherwise I wasted my workout and, you know, every moment of every day revolved around, uh, trying to gain muscle and look a certain way. And whether I was orthorexic, anorexic, disordered eating, obese, um, all these things, I was never happy, never, never happy. Um, and really, even though this led me to what you would call biohacking and paleo and keto and fasting and all the supplements, you know, I started like down the path with supplements for bodybuilding and trying to look right and aesthetics. And then when my whole body was shutting down, it became immune supplements because I literally couldn't get out of bed for about six months. Uh, but then it led me to, you know, working at GNCs and, and all these different uh, vitamin shops and helping other supplement companies out, write their, um, you know, sell sheets and, and work on message boards and help them with formulations. And, and it became something I was knowledgeable about, passionate about, taught other people on. But to be honest, like even with all the performance enhancements and biohacking that I had up until I'm going to say about three, three and a half years ago, even that I was still pushing and gaslighting and working 80 to 100 hours a week 
and still in that wounded masculine energy of drive, 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 and being insecure, imposter syndrome, all those kinds of things, I was healthier in terms of the supplements, the diet, the working out. But even that was coming from a place of still not being good enough. And really it wasn't until, and, and I gained a lot of knowledge on how to maintain a body that wanted to fall apart uh, with all of these interventions that are all covered in my book, The Energy Formula. But it wasn't until I did psychedelics for the first time that like I had a shift on being able to actually love myself and discover what that was. And that's where everything, everything changed. And I, I learned about mindset. I learned about self-care. I learned about, you know, having like relationships that were about people loving me for who I am versus what I can do for them. Um, so that's, that's a, that's my journey. And that's why I've been talking. Not only do I talk about biohacking and supplements and keto and fasting and, you know, all these kinds of things, but I also talk a lot on mindset, depression, PTSD, anxiety, suicidal thoughts, and psychedelics, um, and the science around psychedelics and how to do them you know, correctly, what the actual truth is, what the myths are, what supplements can, so like bringing in my supplement background and diet background into those, what supplements can support uh, the integration work of these supplements can lower the dose, or sorry, of the psychedelics and lower the dose of the psychedelics. So that's where, you know, I've been is, is really speaking. It's probably where I'm most passionate is, is in depression and, and suicidal thoughts and kind of rearranging uh, mindset, learning how to love yourself, support yourself. Uh, that's become a big passion of mine. Sean, first of all, thank you so much for sharing. So honestly, all of that stuff, because I think that it's the mental health aspect is such an underappreciated thing when we get into this space. And my background is in psychology and my minors in addiction study. So I have a personal interest in this. I've shared before that I had depression on and off my whole adult life, basically, until I finally started eating more properly. And it's really been, you know, a game changer for me. Um, but so many just wonderful things that you said there. And I almost feel like I have to have you back again some other day to talk more about the whole, um, you know, the depression and the mental health aspect of it. But that's kind of not what we had planned today. Um, but you did mention your book, and it sounds like you talk about a lot of that in there. So in the meantime, before I can entice you to come back someday, we'll have people like go, go read more of your story with the book. Um, and the stuff, the stuff that's coming out about psychedelics, I mean, I think some people hear that and they just automatically like zone out because they're like that can't be a thing but it's really amazing what they are doing for mental health with psychedelics and again that, that will be a future topic of discussion um but you mentioned so many things in there you mentioned you know how your background as challenging as it was it did give you a lot of insight into certain ways that you could um like you said support a body that wasn't optimally functioning at the time and this kind of led you from, you know, what I read on your bio and, and getting all your information from your assistant is that you're very focused on peak performance. And that is something that I'm really interested in as well. And stress management. I mean, those are two things um, that are very, you know, surface level. And that so many of the things that you mentioned are kind of underlying all of that. Um, but I'd love it if you could just share a little bit about some of your best tips for peak performance and stress management and kind of the things that you learned about maybe using supplements in relation to those while you were going through this journey? Yeah, I, well, I mean, first and foremost, um, like I said, I was like biohacking my way to performance, figuring out how to keep myself out of crashing and essentially breaking, uh, but also how to like work more hours, how to go from 60 to 70 to 80 to 90 to 100. And um, I think we need to rethink that paradigm. Like I do see things shifting. It's not like the same, like, you know, I feel like Gary V, you know, the hustle and grind, the David Goggins and, you know, a lot of Jocko, a lot of these guys that are really popular that are, you know, the kick in the ass kind of guys, like, wake up at three 30 and grind, you know, and all that stuff. Like, um, I'm not saying 
that that doesn't work to some degree. Like I've built several companies now and um, I've become successful, but there was a toll. There was very much a toll that it took on my body. And it's taken me years to work through what I did to my body in that process and my mind. So, you know, I will say first and foremost is some of the things that are going to sound a little bit more woo really need to be the foundation is truly loving yourself and think about well, why are you doing this right now? Like, is it is it coming from a place of abundance or scarcity? Is it coming from a place of growth mindset? Is it lighting you up? It's it's the reason why no one, I believe, can keep up with me in supplements because I would do this for free. So I'd ask you, whatever you're doing, would you do it for free? Does it light you up? If not, then you're not going to get there. You will burn out. You will never keep up with the best. You won't. So, you know, that's that's a, a key thing there, too. It needs to feel like play most of the time. Of course, we have to hustle sometimes. But if it feels like grind a lot of the time, that's not a good place to be. Like, if you feel like you're sacrificing most of the time, not a good place to be. Think about the word grind, like where it's like there's heat, there's smoke, there's pieces breaking off, like the physics of it, right? I mean, he's saying, keep your head down, hustle and grind. It's like sympathetic nervous system, hustle, which makes sense. That's that masculine energy, the Puma energy. You need to go chase it. You need to go get it. We need to be in that energy sometimes. But the other energy needs to be flow, needs to be like uh, the passion, needs to be the, the lighting up, like the achievement, the, the joy, like the inward, the, the feminine, whatever, right? Like it needs to be that yin and yang. If you're listening to the Gary V's, it's like hustle and grind. It's like sympathetic, ultra sympathetic. It's like you're never getting to a place where you're uh, relaxing or where you're in flow. I actually think flow is, is really a combination of parasympathetic and sympathetic where you're like both relaxed and stimulated. That's the ultimate place to be where you have true joy. That's that lighting up. So that's where you need to be. I can tell you right now, yeah, we can get into to the supplements. Absolutely. But that is important. And having the right people around you, when I was gaslighting myself and considering myself an imposter, I put a lot of people around me that were doing the same thing because that's like what I know. So I had narcissists around me. I had, you know, people taking advantage of me, people that were miserable people because misery loves company. So think about those five people that are closest to you and who they are. You have to consciously choose them. You cannot just let them be random. Let them be the people at your house, at your school, at your job. You know, my neighbor, it's like, oh, it's who it is. Like, that's who I hang out with every day. You need to put people around you that you want to be like, emulate, uh, look up to. And you need to make sure that you're giving as much as you're getting. You need to be providing value in that relationship as well. Um, this is where masterminds are helpful, or I've set up these pods where I have like three people that I speak to like um, in a 15 to 30 minute meeting once a week, we keep each other accountable um, and, you know, help each other with contacts, you know, break down sometimes like cheer for each other. Sometimes this is one of the other things that would happen to me a lot too. Like throughout my life was I'd get on Ben Greenfield and I was like, you suck. You need to be on Joe Rogan. I'd get this house. It's like, it's not this bigger house. I'd get this car. It's not this Ferrari. It's like, it's not, you know, it's like you, you worked with this supplement company, muscle tech, but it's not, you know, it's like, it was never good enough. And I would never celebrate my wins. I would never enjoy climbing the mountain and look back at the beautiful view. I would always just keep climbing. And that is a miserable place to be. So it's really important that you do those things. As just far as, people, sorry, go ahead. I'm just hoping, before you move into the supplements, I'm just hoping like what you just said in the last five minutes is about mm -hmm. 5,062 times more valuable than whatever you're about to say about supplements. I agree. Um, I, actually, I actually marked a, um, 
one of the things that you said that I'm, it's going to make a great little soundbite for people, but you also answered a question for me personally that I've been struggling with in my life recently. So thank you for that. Um, but now, so, um, so first get your mind right. And that's, we do talk a, a lot about that on this show. And I think really until you do that, the rest of the stuff you do is you're kind of just wasting your money um, in some ways. I mean, there are definitely and, some- And, I, can and I say one thing in particular, I find that um, that I've been in a lot of masterminds where, uh, especially these male masterminds where men are really in a wounded place. Um, um, there's a lot of uh, talk about emasculation, um, toxic masculinity. Men are suppressing, dissociating. They're not sure how to be alpha males or beta males or what's even right anymore. And a lot of these men that I see that are entrepreneurs and leaders are hurting bad. And this is a number that I'm going to be like frank about, and I won't talk about any actual people, but in these circles I've been in, and I would say this is several hundred men that are, that are leaders or CEOs. I, I would say about 90% have been abused. Um, and about 30 to 40% have been sexually abused. And that is a number that you'll never hear. Um, men are not good at sharing in general. You know, we're taught to just dissociate and, um, and deal with it. And I think women do a much better job at connecting and, essentially at least some level of base, basic therapy connecting with each other. Um, and I hope there's some recalibration where, you know, men can be, you know, this alpha can be leaders, can be, you know, strong and be connected, be loving, hold space. I hope that's where we're heading because right now it's like, it feels like men are very confused and, um, I just wanted to throw, throw that out there. Cause that's, that's something that's, that's on my heart that, um, there's just a lot of, it, it feels like, and, and this is true of, of women in the sense too, that when I see leaders like driven leaders, there's a lot of pain behind it. That's fueled it. And the question is that's created you and that's created the drive. But can you get to a place now where you're not passing on that pain, where you're finding some joy in what you built and can appreciate what you built? Can you now find that balance? Can you now help and heal instead of pass on the pain that's burning inside? Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. I think it's way more maybe common in male leaders, but I see mm -hmm. it and female leaders too. I've worked with a couple of CEOs pretty closely over the last several years. And um, I would say that, you know, it definitely exists for women too. And one thing we're actually, I'm working on a, um, a summit. It's like my other life, <laughs> a summit event where we're actually having one of the keynotes is on talking about burnout and how to avoid burnout. So I'm really hoping that she will touch on some of the things that you brought up here today, because I think that that is, very pervasive in our society, whether it's male or female. And I think women have a different kind of pressure because they're mm -hmm. almost, we're almost like an underdog to start with. So nobody, so they have to almost be more aggressive to kind of get in the male space. So it's a, it's a very interesting topic. The, the work Sean, you're just bringing is... up way too many good <laughs> things today. <laughs> we talked to you for so long. This is amazing. <laughs> the work world is definitely set up in a very masculine way and it, and it doesn't um, really highlight uh, the superpowers of women in terms of the kind of uh, the healing nature of women, intuition of women, um, you know, kind of the, the creativity of women. Um, it just feels like it's still set up in that kind of capitalistic hustle and grind, you know, masculine energy. And, um, you know, there is some change that's taking place and you are seeing more female leaders and 
and you are seeing more irregular work weeks and, you know, kind of intuition based things and creative based things. And, you know, I think that's wonderful. So absolutely. Agreed. So, well, let's maybe go slightly different here then, because yeah. let's say that you are a person that's very wrapped up in this masculine energy and you're trying to find some balance. Are there maybe some supplements or other tools that you've just discovered along the way that can kind of help, sh help shift that balance more towards the yang side or yin and yang more balanced rather than just being this constant um, yang male energy? Yeah, that's a great question. And I do believe like oh, the biohacking term definitely feels masculine, right? Like that was like the idea for me. It's like, I'm like hacking, I'm cutting like the <laughs> shortcut, like push, push more performance. And, you know, there's the newer term health optimization where we're looking at things that are ancient as well as new technology. So yes, I can tell you about the supplements, the biologics, the peptides, the, you know, IVs, um, you know, all these kinds of things, like the newer technologies, the devices, the blood tests, love all that stuff. Those are, that's, that kind of leans that, that masculine, but then there's this ancient wisdom on how we live longer, like the idea of blue zones and slowing down and being more supported, doing things that are, that are some of these feminine type concepts that, that are now gaining a lot of attention, like journaling, meditation, prayer, breath work, uh, you know, community. forest, forest bathing, sun gazing community without a doubt, hundred percent. That's actually my, the last letter of my book, the energy formula is your tribe. Like, and I feel like it's the most important is again, the people you put around you. And when you do look at blue zones, like, yeah, they have like a certain diet. Yeah. Most of them are by the ocean, you know, these kinds of things, but I would say the most important is that they really slow down They're They have gratitude. They're around each other. They're supporting each other. They feel like that there's this net for them. No one ever feels like they're uh, not important. They're important to the family. They're important to the community. And so many of us feel alone and unimportant and unseen and unheard. And this is not the case in these cultures where people are living a long time. And I could show you, like you're saying, I could show you people like these biohackers. There's some of them that, let's be honest, like they're not living forever. Uh, they're trying. <laughs> like they, they look like they might not live that long, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, and so, and there's people that like haven't done a single supplement, a single peptide, uh, you know, I haven't done PRP and, you know, whatever. And they're living like to 115, you know, so it's because they have passion in their life. It's because they have purpose. It's because they have connection. Those things matter so much. And, and they allow themselves to sleep and disconnect, you know, to rest mentally. And a lot of us, you know, this is going to be a big one as far as hacks is learning how to disconnect. That was one of the biggest ones to me. Like if you're, if your phone, your watch now, like you, you, I've seen like, there's like an Apple ring coming out. That's got a screen to it. And then they want to do the Apple vision with like, you're wearing it on your face. So you got the watch and the ring and the thing on your face and you got your phone in your pocket and you got your laptop and it's like, Ding, 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 all day long. Like you're super connected. Your friends might want to connect to you. And of course, like that means you're always connected to the capitalistic machine of people trying to sell you things and have you buy things. And of course, feel insecure and miserable about yourself. So you're fully controlled, fully locked in into this dopamine roller coaster. And what do you think that's doing to your circadian rhythm, to your neurotransmitters, to your hormones? What do you think that's doing to your health to be that connected, to be in that drug addicted loop? This is the same loop of cocaine. Literally. Yeah, it is not good. Not, actually, my, I was just away with, um, speaking of disconnecting, my sister was a work trip, but she invited me to tag along on her work trip. And um, she was just telling me, she's like, yeah, she said, I'm getting rid of my Apple Watch. She said, uh, this constant 
notifications and, you know, messages from work and every, she's like, I just can't handle it anymore. So I think people, at least some people are starting to turn the tide a little bit and realize that sometimes it's just, it's too much. And we do need to find a way to let go of some, like technology is wonderful. And it's what allows me to connect with awesome people like you. And I don't have to fly across the country to do it. So I love that aspect of it, but there's certainly times where you need to get rid of some of that so that you can really just like, listen to your intuition, connect with your friends. I think that is the blue zone stuff. If people really look at that, I would say that's the number one thing that all those have in common. They all have slightly different diets. They have different habits, whatever, but the community aspect and being active in in the community and, and like going out for walks with friends after dinner, that sort of thing, that is really what they mostly have in common. I think you could pick almost any like not a garbage diet, but pick any of the other popular diets and put it with that. And I think you'll have a pretty good recipe for success. Totally. Um, And this gets in like, uh, there's two things they have there. So your best friend actually needs to be you. Can you go inside? Can you go internal? And I'll tell you like where you're at mentally. If I put you in a float tank, sensory deprivation chamber for an hour, would you go mad or would you love it? And I can tell you where you're at right now. Cause I know when I first went into a float tank, it was hell. It <laughs> felt like 18 hours because I was so used to like, what's going on on my cell phone? What's going on on my, on my computer? What, what are my friends thinking? I hate myself. Like, why am I not good enough? Like this sucks. Like I, I need to be here. I need to be getting stuff done. This is, uh, this is terrible. Like I wish I was at least watching some distraction of some kind, like some TV <laughs> show or some movie. Like I need to distract a video game. Like uh, at least I want to look at a text. I need, you know, like people, like when they're sitting, right? Like you watch them at the airport or the uh, bus stop at the mall or whatever, they're sitting there even eating by themselves. They have to like get on their phone. They have to like be busy, busy doing something busy, meaningless busyness, because they don't want to look inside. That is hell to go inside because they do not like what they will see. So doing that inner work is really a profound effect of like, you want to affect the external. You want to change everything around you. You want to see the world differently. You need to change the internal First, there's one person that's holding you back right now, and only one. I don't care what you've been through, how hard it's been. I've been through a lot of shit. And there's only one person to blame, and it's me. I want a different life, a better life. It's like they say, it starts with the man in the mirror. That's where I need to be. That's where I need to start. It's the person I need to point the finger at. You want something better. Start with yourself and start doing the inner work. Um, yes. <laughs> so uh, the other thing I was going to say. Think that's part, so interestingly, mm-hmm. I think that is part of the reason that biohacking and supplements are so popular because you can look to these external things like, mm-hmm. oh, I'm just going to, like everything else in the US, right? Oh, I'll just take this pill instead. And that's going to make everything better instead of really doing the hard work of, what you just described. So I think that that is one reason that this topic is so popular now because people are always just looking for an escape. They don't want to deal with. Exactly. The- and and it gets into this whole idea, like going back to the blue zones or, or why these people are living so long. They're not doing all these things. Now, the ultimate combination would be to do these things and live like you're living in the blue zone <laughs> and do the inner work. So that's where we're trying to get to. Um, that's the ultimate example. But we can change our genetics. If you study Dr. Joe Dispenza or Dr. Bruce Lipton, we can change these epigenetics um, based on our emotion, based on what we're eating, based on our environment. Like things change constantly. This idea that genetics are fixed is completely false. And so there's also something called uh, psychosomatic anchors. And if you studied NLP, this is like a big part of that. But here's an example that real quick before you move on, can you tell people what NLP is just to, Oh, neuro linguistic programming. Uh, it's like, it's kind of like the basis of like Jim quick, um, Joe Dispenza, 
uh, Tony Robbins, Brendan Bruchard, like all these things are very heavily NLP based. Um, really amazing stuff to to study and, and really learn how the mind works and, and how to mar- how you're being marketed to, how you're being manipulated, but also how to do like potent inner work and how to do um, really great work as a coach, like when you're using these things the right way to make maximal impact. Um, so psychosomatic anchoring, psycho meaning, uh, you know, thinking in the brain and somatic meaning like in the body and then anchoring, you know, being like that, it's like literally a fixed point. So when you're doing psychosomatic anchoring, it's things that become shortcuts over time, like Pavlovian, like Pavlov's dogs. When you're doing this repeated behavior, that shortcut like elicits that, that thing to happen immediately instead of like, you know, all these steps needing to take place in the body. So like, let's say that you're, you know, the, the Sardinian culture, uh, Sardinia, Italy, a blue zone, you know, you're having your red wine, like, you know, you made this meal as a family, it's fresh, it's delicious, it's like quality foods. And you're sitting there for three hours, like having round after round, laughs after laughs, and, you know, you feel supported, and it's an amazing community. Of course, like you're feeling like oxytocin, you're feeling a good level of dopamine, serotonin, you're in parasympathetic, you're relaxed. You know, this is amazing. Endorphins, like I feel so supported, like zero stress, like inflammation's down, all this. And then the flip side is like of the way like a lot of Americans would eat, like we're, you know, in traffic, we're eating McDonald's, like someone just cut us (laughs) off. We've got the music cranked up. We're shoving this food in our face. There's Coca-Cola to wash it down. But so you can see how like things can get anchored that like the second I would eat that McDonald's, you know, that it's going to like trigger inflammation, not just because of the food, the high glycemic seed oils, you know, all this stuff, not just because of that, but because of the environment I'm putting myself in and the way I normally eat that food and vice versa is true with this Sardinian example. But here's like my challenge. Like I would say that even if I was eating McDonald's in the Sardinian situation, I bet like we would have very different results in terms of my health outcomes with that McDonald's and vice versa. If I was eating celery sticks and carrot sticks, but I was like in traffic and the music blaring and it's Metallica and like, you know, some pissed off and like, I need to get home. And like, there's like jackhammers. And then the second I'm eating carrots and celery, it's like going to trigger that inflammation, that stress. Like that's what these shortcuts are. So it's not just the foods. It's really important to realize how much the environment and how you feel plays into this. Yeah. And that would be an amazing study, wouldn't it? The bad Mm -hmm. food paired with the relaxed atmosphere. I don't think I've ever seen one like that. I've always wanted to do that. Yes. That would be amazing. Yeah, that would be cool. Well, before we run out of time here, and sorry, I have another, I'm interviewing somebody else coming up and I want to make sure that you get a chance to talk about this particular, and I'm probably going to, Parazanthine, is that correct? Yes. Way to say it? Yes, we'll, we'll, we'll do supplements and we'll, we'll do definitely another. We can do more shows or whatever. Um, I would, yes, I would absolutely love that. But I want to give you the opportunity because yeah. you're working on this major project with your new company. And I would yeah. be remiss if I didn't let you chat about that. So, I just yeah. to make- so by the way, I am a biochemist, chief clinical dietitian. <laughs> I have formulated a thousand supplements. I'm not a scientist. So believe it or not. <laughs> Um, I mean, I love having a scientist that appreciates all that other stuff because it kind of like, yeah, just all melds well together. (laughs) Yeah, no, no, for sure. Uh, So parazanthine is a caffeine metabolite. And this is my new ingredient out. I did two other ingredients, T-Crene and Dynamine, that are in close to a thousand products out there. Basically, every pre-workout nootropic fat burner on the market has T-Crene or Dynamine. Now, parazanthine is my new energy ingredient. It is that metabolite of caffeine. So there's three ingredients in the body, three compounds that caffeine can convert into when they're what's called demethylated. It'll be theobromine, theophylline, and parazanthine. And theobromine compound that's 
largely ineffective as far as energy or as a nootropic. It's actually toxic to cats and dogs. Theophylline is a bronchodilator controlled substance, um, tons of side effects. Caffeine is actually in plants to repel insects, has a ton of side effects, especially in slow metabolizers. When we look at the metabolizer gene of caffeine, which is CYP1A2, about, <laughs> about 60% of the population are slow metabolizers. And that means that you have basically almost all the side effects with very little benefit from caffeine. And one of the big reasons for that is caffeine itself doesn't do a whole lot. Caffeine has to convert to paraxanthine to do a lot of the benefit. And while 80% of caffeine converts to paraxanthine, the question is how long does it take and how long are you stuck in caffeine and how much is converting to these other things that are ineffective or have side effects. So we have a range. This is bioindividuality where we think we're all experiencing caffeine the same. We are not. People have a range, a half-life. This means how long it goes from your plasma to, to the level you have initially to how long it takes to get to half that level. And for some people, it's an hour and a half to get to half that level of caffeine. For others, it's 10 and a half hours. That's a 7x difference. This means you could have an energy drink and three days later, it's still in your system. So this is a huge difference for all of us. Paraxanthine is experienced the same across the board. Whether you're a fast metabolizer, slow metabolizer, you have more effects, better effects, because you're cutting all these pieces out and you're getting this cleaner, non-toxic, uh, amazing impact on wakefulness, uh, mood lift, because it's increasing dopamine and serotonin. You feel kind of a swagger, a confidence. Uh, in our preclinical studies, we're seeing that increased BDNF, which is neuroplasticity, increased glutathione and catalase, the, the master antioxidant and reduced oxidative stress, uh, decreased beta amyloid plaque, which is uh, one of the things that may be responsible for Alzheimer's. And by the way, dopamine um, uh, decreasing is, is related to Parkinson's. Increases nitric oxide via PDE9 inhibition. Um, I mean, we're looking at all of these things and going like, wow, it's actually increasing the health of the brain via all these different uh, uh, mechanisms of action, all these different pathways. Um, so this has like been really exciting that we're seeing when we did a, a cycling study where they had to do a 10K uh, all out bout um, and we tested them on uh, multitasking uh, focus uh, kind of tasks uh, before and after the cycling. What we saw is that they were similar with uh, baseline, of course, but then after whether they took paraxanthine or caffeine, huge differences. We saw more errors when they were done cycling on the caffeine, and we saw less errors even after exhaustive exercise when they were on the paraxanthine. So this is like, this is that difference that, yes, both are stimulating, but it's very different in how it's felt, how it's experienced. There's really none of the side effects. We, we're seeing people improve in HRV and sleep when they use it versus oh, with caffeine. We see decreased quality of sleep and decreased HRV. So this is what's been exciting. Um, the branded ingredients called Infinity. It's in a number of products, uh, Muscle Tech, Hydroxy Cut. Uh, there's an energy drink called Update that has it. Um, a, a number of things like we're, we're literally in talks now with over 100 companies some of the biggest companies that you can think of in, in energy drinks and coffee and beverages. So really exciting stuff. It is. And, and just to kind of to put things in a more common perspective for people, some of those things that you need, BDNF, brain drive, neuro, neurotrophic, neurotrophic factors. Factor. Yep. 
and um, glutathione, all of the things that Sean mentioned are like amazing for overall health, for brain health. And before we did this interview, I actually popped on the PubMed because I wasn't really uh, very familiar with paraxanthine. So I just kind of to see what else is out there. So it's not just your company doing this research. There is a lot of research out there comparing caffeine to this. And one of the things I saw was like, um, you know, you mentioned all the cognitive benefits of before and after exercise, but I saw one that even said, um, better muscle building opportunity. Mm -hmm. So there, there are a lot of things with this particular supplement that are, um, you know, I, I don't know why it's not more popular, honestly, because <laughs> you having said all the things that you just said, and just like, for me personally, I just did a genetic thing. I actually did a podcast on it because you're talking about epigenetics and, you know, our genetics aren't fixed. So just because you have a snip of something doesn't mean like maybe you're going to experience everything perfectly, but for the caffeine thing, it's a pretty big one because if you are metabolizing it seven times slower than others. Even if you have caffeine at like 6 a.m. and then it's still in your body by the time you're going to sleep, that's really important to know and to maybe be aware of. So um, yeah, any other benefits to the isolated form of that over caffeine? And can you tell people a little bit about your product? Because I think you just basically like, hey, let's make a clean energy drink mm -hmm. instead of this, you know, these, this garbage that's full of caffeine and sugar. Yeah. So, I mean, there, there has been data on paraxanthine prior to the work that we've done, but it had never been a dietary supplement until we did the work um, around proving that it exists in nature, uh, doing what's called generally recognized uh, safe grass, um, that it's proved in food and beverage. We had to do toxicology work. We're in about 12 studies and 23 patents now. So we're the only one that has that study form. Uh, that is approved for, for use in food and beverage. It's called Nfinity, E-N, Nfinity. Um, and there's so much more coming out. Like we're, we're, we are now looking, if you, if you look at studies where they've looked at caffeine and the CYP1A2 gene, this is the reason why we see some people increase risk of heart attack and stroke and some people decrease. This is why in some studies with cognitive performance or physical performance, we're seeing all these things all across the board where some people have declination in performance and some people have improved performance. That's related to this caffeine metabolizer gene issue. And now with all of our studies, we're now delineating that and really uh, dialing uh, down into that. And we're also taking a lot of... Uh, uh, focus on HRV and sleep quality for sure, because we're seeing caffeine have a tremendous impact on both of those on, on sleep latency, on sleep quality and quantity on, uh, HRV recovery, immunity, all of those things, uh, really massive impact. And, and again, if you're in that 60%, you know, caffeine is having a really negative impact on your health and well being really increasing your risk for uh, heart attack and stroke and diabetes and, and a number of things. So um, this is where it's really important. I believe like the, the easiest thing is to just get off caffeine and get on paraxanthine. You'll feel a hundred times better. Uh, almost everyone I know that's, that's switched, they're, they're never going back. Like they realize like just how dirty of an experience caffeine was. Yeah, I wish I could, you know, it's funny how people become habituated to coffee, though, like the taste of coffee, the ritual yeah. of coffee. It's kind of hard to separate, like if, I mean, I guess obviously you can do decaf coffee, but um, but that's that's very interesting. So yeah, we, we yeah. are doing work around coffee, uh, <laughs> but yes, you could do decaf coffee and, you know, there's a number of products that have capsules uh, with paraxanthine. Um, there are some, you know, ready to mix powders and there's ready to drink energy drinks, but um, I too, I, I actually do decaf coffee, kind of bulletproofed. I do it with MCTs, collagen, um, uh, heavy cream, and and throw in some functional mushrooms. And so I do it with decaf, and then and then I have some paraxanthine with it. Yeah, that sounds perfect. I've I'm I think I need to do a trial of that because the heart rate variability thing is very interesting to me, and I've been like doing some little self-experiments with that lately myself. Mm -hmm. So I'd love to like cut out caffeine for a couple of weeks and see what those numbers do. Cause I have a really good baseline at this point to know where I usually am. Um, so before we finish off here, Sean, and by the way, you were invited back anytime you would like to chat. Um, 
Can you just tell everybody where they can find you? What's mm -hmm. Do you do social media? What's your company website? How can they learn all of the things about what you're doing in the world? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Um, so at Sean Wells, S-H-A-W-N-W-E-L-L-S on Instagram. Uh, a lot of great content there. I have like infographics and reels, like where I break down my top 10 supplements for anxiety, depression, for performance, for men, for women, um, you know, all these different stacks, uh, nootropic stacks and muscle building stacks, go through all these ingredients, ingredients you've never heard of. I break them there first, go through the studies and make it all easily digestible. Um, also a lot of content on YouTube. Again, just look up Sean Wells. So YouTube, uh, a lot of great video content. Um, you know, I speak on stage all over the world, uh, do a lot of podcasts like this one. Um, you know, my, my content that I just do from my studio or, or whatever on all these topics, uh, obviously I can go into more depth than what I do on my Instagram. Um, and then seanwells.com, S-H-A-W-N-W-E-L-L-S. I have my newsletter, how to work with me, how to find more content. My newsletter goes out every week. It's free. It's concise. Ton of information. Again, breaking down studies, talking about some things that I can't talk about on Instagram, maybe like psychedelics. Mm -hmm. um, and then lastly, uh, Energy Formula, my book. You go to energyformula.com. Uh, I have the first two chapters free, either by uh, Audible or um, ebook that you can uh, consume there. A lot of um, extra downloadables, a hidden chapter, recipe book, all that kind of stuff. Oh, and then if you want to work with me as a formulator, if you're a company, uh, zonehalo.com, and that's where you can reach me. Z O N E H A L O, Zone Halo. Awesome. Well, Sean, thank you so much again for, I thoroughly enjoyed this. I can't wait to follow you on all the places because all this little, I'm going to say nerdy it, because I consider myself a nerd. I consider it a term of endearment. I think it's a good thing. So mm -hmm. all this lovely ner nerdy stuff you talk about, I can't wait to follow along. So everybody go follow Sean and learn more about how you can use, I mean, all this wonderful stuff that he talked about today to impact your health. So thanks again, Sean. No, thank you for having me on.